everybody, it's Freddie Mac and I'm back with a short little video to talk to you about how to upgrade the firmware on your TID Radio TDH8. There's a new firmware release out you might have seen of the TID Radio TDH8 software, firmware. So I'm going to run you through a quick little video on how to do that. I have upgraded firmware on TDH8s for a while now because they have had a few releases of their firmware and I'm not entirely sure what this is going to get us but I do know one thing that it got us and I'll show you here but when you turn it on now you turn it on you get that nice new nifty little logo on the login or on the power on nifty uh, other than that when you hit menu and go down to menu 45 you've got a mic gain menu now power on message you can do an icon which you saw just now a power on message or nothing at all I don't know what a breath lead is maybe it's LED uh, anybody help me out with that I'm feeling kind of stupid right now that's not hard is it breath lead and then the version, the version is uh, 230830, so August 30th, 2023. And then the regular items for the menu. So how do we do this? Okay. We're going to jump back and do a little screen search in here. Okay. There we go. So I tried to adjust the uh, resolution here to make it look a little better and it kind of squeezed the picture a little bit, but you want to go to the link provided. It's H846S in parentheses 230830.bin. And this is not programming software as it says. It is software, but it's going to be the firmware upgrade software. You're going to hit the download button and download it, which I have already done. So. Let me just take you there now. And it comes with a, a readme file, which you should very much indeed read in great detail. It's right here. You should read every, every sentence in this page. These pages, I should say. But I'm going to run through them with you. And hopefully make this... Well, thank you for doing that. and hopefully make this a little less painful process. You've got the readme file, that's the bin file, which is your firmware update. And then you've got the IAP firmware upgrade.exe. That is the installer program, install it. I, I take that back, this is not the readme file. This is the readme file, and this is a temp file generated by that readme file, so read the readme file, please. Once you've read the readme file and you've installed the software, then you're gonna want to run the program so once you're done you got the uh, firmware upgrade installer installed you're gonna see this little file right here you're gonna run it and it'll look like this now the first thing you've got to do is make sure your programming cable is installed and mine is just a it's just a standard Beofang k-type programming cable it's FTT FTDI uh, with the prolific chip variant USB. It's always worked for me. It, it recognized COM7, so I, it's the one I chose. I hit OK. Next thing you want to do is grab that bin file. That's your brand new firmware. So you're going to hit Open File and navigate to it so you know where you put it. Go there. That's it. The 23rd of August 30th, or 2023, August 30th, dot bin. Hit that. Hit Open. Now, before we go any further, we want to get the radio ready. So, this radio, as you can see, got the old splash screen. When you hit menu, you go down, we got the GMRS 221026 version of firmware. This came to me as a Gen 2 but it didn't have a C-type battery, which they did send later, by the way. I did get my C-type battery. I've already backed up the code plug, so I have a program 
software already ready. I'm going to plug this in. And for all giggles and purposes, you want to hold in on this because these connectors don't seat down into that socket very well. Should have been a straight out 90 in my opinion. Straight out 90. But no, we got the money saving L bracket, whatever. But you want to hold on down right there. But you want the radio turned off. I know this sounds weird, but turn it off, hold in the plug, and let's go back to our firmware. We're almost all ready to go here. Now, I haven't turned the radio on, and I'm going to hit, hit start. Turn on the radio. And look, it's downloading Santa. And it doesn't take any time at all. And download was successful. Now all you gotta do now is hit end and quit the program. And we're back to our radio. I always like to do this before I do anything else. Turn it off. Turn it back on. And let's see what we got. Menu. Hmm. Menu. Down. There's our mic gain, power on message. I like to hit menu and send it to icon. Hit menu again, down, breath lead. I obviously, I honestly don't know what that means. And then there's the version, GMRS underscore 230830. Let's hit exit, power it off, power it back on. And there's our new splash screen icon. So what's new? I don't know. I hope. I just didn't come to a place of no return. But hey, when they send you enough of these things, you can experiment a little. So let's go to the VFO. And there we go. Type in, well, 444-100's in the VFO. And I can't transmit so I'm going to try something that I know works on the older version of firmware don't know if it's going to work on this one power it off hold down the PTT and the pound sign suffer with arthritis and then turn the radio on invalid unlock system data will be eraser oh not invalid <laughs> Initial unlock SYS. Data will be eraser. Yes, not. So I'm going to turn that back off. I'm going to double check that I've got my code plug saved. So, PTT. Whoops, turned off. PTT, pound sign. Initial unlock system. Data will be eraser. Yes, not. So which button gives me what? I'm going to hit menu for yes. Radio reboots and tells me welcome. Let's see what the menus say. Oh, mic gain's there, but it's at 15 now instead of 32 where I had it. Power on message. Change it back to icon. Breath lead, five seconds. Maybe it's the, oh, I bet that's the screen, maybe. Let's try something. Yeah, don't know what that is still. Now the, the firmware says 230830. It doesn't say GMRS in front of it. So let's exit that. And yes, we can. Ooh, I just reset everything, I think. Wow, hope, hope we're still recording. I don't know what just happened. Let's turn the power down. Yo, yeah, my camera disconnected, didn't it? That's what happened. Okay, and we're back. <laughs> when I keyed up the radio earlier, it killed my camera. So there you go, folks, the TID Radio TDH-8 firmware upgrade. It's really not that hard if you take the time to prepare. If you don't follow the directions closely, there's a chance you can brick your radio. That's just all there is to it. Obviously, you want to think long and hard. 
you actually need to upgrade your radio's firmware. If you want to, be prepared. There is a chance you could brick it. It's just all there is to it. These are the chances that you take. There are benefits to upgrading your firmware. But if you don't need to, don't do it. But if you want to, give it a shot. Just know there's a risk in there that you could damage the radio permanently. Just It's uh, part of the territory, as it were. So I put a better antenna on mine. Don't get me wrong, those antennas that come with it are okay. But I, I really like these signal stocks, signal sticks from signal stuff. And if you let that go, it'll slap the far out of you. Don't ask me how I know. Uh, but for a radio that feels really good in the hand, hey, the firmware upgrade could very well be worth it. But that's how you do it, folks. The TID Radio TDH8. Get yours today on Amazon. This is Freddie Mac wishing all the good signals to be yours and wishing you seven threes. Ham on, y'all.